Here at Merch Design Academy, we've been getting a lot of requests to make more beginner-friendly tutorials, so that's what we're gonna start doing right now. In this tutorial, I'm showing you guys how to make pro-level graphics in Adobe Illustrator, and I'm gonna walk you through each step so you guys understand and can follow along even if you are a beginner. Before we get into the design process, I wanna give a huge shout out to our sponsor. Did you know that Kittle now has a powerful AI tool that allows you to unleash your creative potential? Simply type in a prompt, choose the type of art you want, and watch their AI system bring your idea to life. On the Kittle AI page, you're going to see describe what you want to see and that is where you want to type in your prompt so i'm just going to type in magical wizard because why not i love wizards once you type in your prompt you can choose an art style that you want to go for we can use image styles clip art styles vector styles and even patterns for this one i'm going to go to clip art styles and just select pencil drawing and let's click generate image and see what happens in a few short seconds you're going to see your art generated on the right side this one's interesting but not quite what i was looking for so let's try a brand new prompt so there you go, with our new prompt, we were able to get the image that we were looking for. I love this one, so I'm gonna go with it. With their AI prompt book, you will learn everything you need to harness the true power of Kittle AI, so I definitely recommend you check that out. This AI tool is going to be extremely useful for all skill levels, and I will personally be exploring it more. Join the waitlist today by visiting the link in the description of this video and receive 100 credits at launch. And as an added bonus, you can use the code CHARLIE to redeem one month of their pro plan free and $15 off other plans. Have fun creating. In part one, we're going to be making a badge design. And the first thing you're going to see when you open up Adobe Illustrator for the first time is a prompt to make a new document. If you look on the right hand side here, I have mine set to four inches by four inches. And I don't need it any larger than that because this is a vector program and vector is lossless. You can scale these graphics to any size and that's pretty much it. So we can keep everything the same and let's hit create. Now I've already done that of course, so I do not need to do that again. If your layout looks a little different than mine, no worries. All you have to do is head up to the top right corner and you will see the layout section and you can choose any of them that you like. I prefer Essentials Classic. I'm just kind of an OG guy when it comes to the original layout of Adobe Illustrator. So I like Essentials Classic. You can also try Essentials or maybe if you're a painter, you could try painting. It really is uh, kind of up to you what you want to select. The main things that I use in Adobe Illustrator are layers, Pathfinder, Align, Swatches, Properties. These are the panels that I use all the time. But on the left hand side, you're going to see all of your tools. And these are really, really important. The ones that we're going to be really utilizing today are the type on a path tool, which is if you click on T, you'll see like a little drop down and you will see type on a path. We're going to be using that today along with shapes. We're going to be using an ellipse. Uh, besides that, not very many other things we're going to be using. We're going to start off with the circle today. So if you simply press L on your keyboard, that will go to your ellipse tool. Now, when you click and drag, you'll notice it starts to create a circle. Now, if you're clicking and dragging, you're going to notice that the circle does warp and it becomes more of an oval or whatever you want. But if you hold in shift, you'll notice that it actually will snap into place and the aspect ratio will lock. So the width and height are the same and you can actually see that on the corner there where the gray box is. If you hold an option and shift at the same time, it will lock to the original position that you first created the circle in. So let me show you guys that again. So let's go to the circle. Maybe we'll make it a red color and let's start in the center here. And I know that's my center because I have smart guides on. So now that I start off in the center and I'm holding in shift and option, you can see that it is actually resizing it to the center of wherever my point was originally. There's two things that I mentioned there that are pretty important. If I select my shape again, which I'm already selecting, you can go up to the top and change the color on the fly, which is pretty cool. You can also just left click on the color down here and do the same exact thing. And you can even go to the swatches if you feel like it, which are right here. So really it is up to you how you wanna change the color. For now, let's go ahead and just make it black. To make my badge, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to select my shape. So I'm just gonna left click on my shape with my uh, selection tool. If you press V on your keyboard, that is a shortcut. While selecting that, I'm just gonna press Shift and X. And what that's going to do is it's going to shift my foreground color and make it my stroke color, which is really useful because now I can head up to the top and you're going to notice that your color has a little line through it, a red line. And that means that we have no background color. If I take this and put it on the gray area of my canvas here, you can see that it does not have a fill which is what I wanted. And now it also gives me a stroke option. So I can change the point of the stroke just by left clicking on the arrow up, as you can see, and it will actually make the stroke bigger, which is pretty cool. 
So we're gonna go about right here. We can actually go smaller with the circle too. So I'm just gonna resize it a little bit and I'm gonna keep the stroke at five. Next up, I just wanna left click on the circle and press Command C and Shift Command V. What that just did, and you might not be able to see it, but if you go to your layers palette, you actually created a duplicate copy of the circle, which is really cool. And this is all of the layers, by the way, on our artboard that you see here. So if we have another artboard, we can create multiple layer groups, if you will. So we only have one layer group and we have two circles, as you can see, which is great because now we can use the exact same resize principles I just showed you. Remember before, when I was resizing my circle, I held in shift and option. We're gonna now use the same exact method in order to keep the circle proportionate and centered because that's what we're gonna need. So I'm just gonna go about right here with the circle. We can even take that stroke down to one point just so we can visualize where it's going to be. And it actually probably helps too since it's not so thick. We can kind of see exact positioning of that. So remember, we're gonna be adding text around it. So what do we need to do? We need to press T on our keyboard first and foremost that locates our type tool for us. And if you actually left click and hold that left click, you can go down to your type on a path tool. Now we need to select this in order to type on a path exactly as the name entails. So with that tool selected, what you wanna do is you wanna hover over the line. You're gonna know that you're above the work path when you notice there's like a little wavy line as well. And that's how you know you can left click. So left click and what it's going to do is apply some lorem ipsum which is just default text. It's basically placement text. And that's how you know you did it right. At this point, we can start typing out our name. We can literally just left click on all of this and you're gonna see it selects everything and we could start typing. But before we even get that far, I wanna focus your attention under properties and you're going to see character. And this is actually where we can change our font. And I already have a font picked out, so I'm gonna go down to EFCO overhold demo. And this one's really nice for badges. But now that I have my font selected, I can start typing out anything I want. So I'm gonna start typing out badge design. And as you can see, it is actually typing around the path exactly what we wanted, but it's not in the exact position that we wanted. Now you can try aligning the paragraphs and everything, but it's not always going to be perfect. So instead, what we're gonna do is go to our direct selection tool. When we go to our selection tool, you're gonna to see these little lines that appear, and these are actually your anchor points that you wanna focus on. You can drag these around the path and actually use them to center your, your text. Now, you don't even need the top ones right here. We really only gotta focus on this bottom one. So now we're just gonna left click on that line and drag it all the way to the top, rotate it until it snaps into place. And now I have smart guides on, so it actually shows me that my text is centered. So I'm gonna let go of my left click. If you don't see smart guides, no worries. All you wanna do is head up to view and you're going to see something called smart guides. If you navigate all the way to the bottom, almost to the bottom, you're gonna see smart guides and I have a check next to mine. You can also just press command U and that is a little shortcut for you. So now we have our smart guides enabled, but I'm not done yet. I wanna show you guys how you can change the positioning of our actual path, or should I say our text on the path. In order to do that, you just wanna select your text, head up to the top where it says type. And when you click on type, you're just gonna navigate down a little bit and you're gonna see type on a path. And you will see a bunch of different options, but all we really have to focus on is type on a path option. So you wanna left click on that. And now we can actually choose where we want to align our path. So let's click on this and let's center it and then press okay. So now when we go to resize our text on the very top here, we can do it or we can do it on a properties. It will stay centered to that line, which I personally actually prefer. It's completely up to you though, that's optional. And it's staying centered exactly what I wanted. Our letter spacing is just super tight right now and I don't like that. So if you want to fix that, all you have to do is left click on the text and it's going to highlight it as you can see. And then all you have to do is hold an option and use the right arrow. And I believe that is Alt on a PC. And you can see that it is actually changing the letter tracking. And if you really need to fix in between each letter, you can just press T on your keyboard and then left click in between each letter, hold an option, and you can nudge things over. As you can see, we can kind of fine tune it now. Doing it this way, we have finer control over our letter spacing, and it also is going to depend on the font itself. I do think this needs a little bit more work, so I'm just gonna quickly go through it. It doesn't need to be perfect, but definitely work on it. It's gonna take a little bit of time to get used to. Sometimes it's good to click off of everything and just look at the design and kind of sit back and analyze it. And when I did that, I noticed that my text is way too centered, um, meaning it's too close to the center and I need to fix that. So I'm just gonna left click on it with my selection tool. Remember that is V on your keyboard. And with that selected now, I'm just gonna hold in shift option 
and use the up arrow to nudge it up a little bit. You can also do the opposite way, which is down, and it's really helpful, and you can use it, uh, left and right as well to change the letter spacing or letter tracking. This is looking a little better. We have more room to work with in the center, which is great. So I'm gonna leave it about right there. On the bottom, I want to add some more text and I also want it to say Adobe Illustrator for beginners. So what I wanna do is instead of creating another circle and creating another work path, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to actually press Command C and Shift Command V to paste that text on top. And if I move it, you could see that I have a duplicate copy, which is amazing because guess what? We can use this anchor point again to kind of move this around our work path that we created originally. So we're just reusing that work path essentially. With the bottom, it's tricky because you wanna make sure it's centered like this, but you also wanna make sure it's upright. So you just wanna left click and move your mouse up a little bit and basically position it about right there. And as you can see, it kind of moved, so I just need to nudge it back over a little bit. There you go. Now we just need to change our font size, which you could do up here, or you could do it in the properties panel. It really depends on your taste. I kind of like doing it up here. It's just habit. Um, but yeah, now we're just going to nudge it down a little bit, just like this, until we get a font size that we are happy with. I think about right there looks pretty good. Um, we do have to change the baseline shift, but we will do that in a second. Before I change the baseline shift though, I just want to change the name. The text is a little bit big still, so I'm gonna go back up to my font size and I'm just gonna go down a little bit more until it fits in there nicely. I do not like the positioning, so I'm just gonna hold in shift and option again and use the arrow down to kind of center it. Now I wanna add another text line, so in order to do that, all we have to do is copy Adobe Illustrator and paste it. So what do we do? We press Command C, Shift Command V, and we just change the baseline shift again, it's really easy. And this one's going to say for beginners. There you go. What I wanna do is actually delete Adobe out of the top line so it's more central. Um, the top line was way too long and I just didn't like the way it looks. The only other thing I wanna do now is click off of everything and then press T on my keyboard again and let's just left click somewhere on the canvas, maybe on the top right here, and just type in in. So I can put that above everything. So there you go, it's in place and I'm just gonna resize it holding in shift and option so it stays central and that's pretty much it. If you pay close attention, we have a lot of empty space on the left and right here and in the center. We're gonna fix the center in a second, but I wanna focus my attention to these empty areas on the left and right. Now, we could do one of two things to fix this. We can make an illustrator for beginners larger to fill up the space, or we can make some sort of element to go right there, and that's exactly what I wanna do. I wanna make some stars or something, and here's a really easy way to do that. So I'm gonna basically just click and drag over to the gray area, and let's just make a circle. I'm gonna hold in shift while creating this circle. So I'm left clicking and dragging while holding in shift, and now we have a circle. So what I'm gonna do with the circles, I'm gonna go up to effect. So under effect, you're gonna see distort and transform. You wanna select pucker and bloat. And if you have preview checked, you're going to see things update in real time. So what you could do is start dragging the slider to the left and right, and you're gonna notice the shape change drastically. We're gonna drag this over towards Pucker more, and you're gonna get a star, which should look something like this. Uh, so it's negative 80%. I'm gonna press okay now. And there you go, we have a star. I'm gonna go up to object and I'm gonna expand the appearance. And the cool thing is we can warp this star and make it kind of the shape that we want it. So I want it to be a little bit longer on the top and bottom. So about right here. So I want it to be taller than it is wide. So maybe it's a little too tall, so I'm just gonna resize it a little bit more. Now, it's really skinny is my only problem with it. So we'll fix that in a second. So before we fix it, let's kind of position it where we want it and maybe make another star and make it a little smaller. There you go. And then we can put this one right here, maybe put the smaller one right here. So it kind of creates a nice little, kind of copies the shape of the circle a little bit more. And you kind of want to just make sure they're positioned correctly, but I think this looks pretty good. What I want to do is add a stroke around them so it thickens them up a little bit. So it's really easy to do that. When you're selecting the shape, all you have to do is head up to stroke and let's just add like a one pixel stroke to it. If you zoom in, you'll see that the black values are different. So we can actually fix that just by going to our stroke real quick and just changing the color. And there you go, it fixes it automatically for us. So we wanna do the same thing for both of them. All we have to do is copy the properties over. So in order to do that, you just wanna select the shape, use the eyedropper tool, and just left click on the other star and it will copy that over. Now, 
These look fine as is, but what I wanna do is round them. So I'm just gonna left click on both of them and then I'm gonna head up to the top where it says stroke and left click on it. On that stroke menu, you're gonna see corner and you just wanna select the middle option and that says round join and that is exactly what you choose to round the corners of your strokes and now you know. We don't have them on the other side unfortunately, but we can easily fix that. So let's go ahead and select the stars again and before we even go further, I wanna introduce you to one more shortcut. If you press Command G, that will group those stars together so now they move together. And with those selected, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard in order to nudge them around the artboard and kind of fine tune the positioning. Um, the issue is though, we need them on the other side and there's a couple ways we can go about it. We can always just duplicate it and flip it horizontally, but that's annoying to do it that way. So instead of doing it that way, just press O on your keyboard and that's going to go to something called the reflect tool. Now this is really cool. They're already selected. So all we have to do is hold an option and find a center point on our design here. And we're going to use a circle for this. So if I hover over the circle, you can see that there is already a center anchor point. So let's left click. And what we want to do is we actually want to copy it vertically. We don't want to switch anything else. You want to keep the angle the same. You want to keep everything else the same. You just want to select vertical and then press copy. Another thing that I would like to do is add a stroke to my text. So I'm gonna select the very top line. Before I add a stroke to the text though, I wanna start grouping my elements together so everything is nicely nested together because it's easy to kind of mess up and select the wrong text line since they are all kind of intertwining. So I'm just gonna select in and then Illustrator and For Beginners and make sure they are selected by moving them and they are, so I'm gonna press Command G and that's gonna group them. So now that those are grouped, I can add a stroke to them and it's gonna do it to every single one of those elements in that group. And now we can do the same thing for the top line. You just wanna kinda of move it real quick, make sure you are selecting it and you can do the same thing. Let's add a stroke. This time I'm only gonna do a .25 stroke to kind of match everything, and that looks pretty good. So now we are pretty much ready to finish our badge by adding a center element, so let's do that. For the center element, I'm just gonna press T on my keyboard and left click, and let's go ahead and just uh, maybe type in B because we're doing a badge design, right? So B for badge. And from here, let's just find another font that kind of fits a retro vibe that we're going for. And this one is completely up to you. You guys can choose any font you want. Maybe this one is pretty cool. So let's just kind of put that in place. There you go, see? And it's already looking really good now. The only thing I wanna do though to make sure everything's perfectly centered is press Shift Command O. And what that does is it actually outlines the text. So what I'm gonna do is click on this little drop down menu. It looks like a little folder icon and I want to align to artboard. And what that's going to do is it's going to actually align it perfectly to my artboard, which is what we want because we want it perfectly centered. With that perfectly centered, let's zoom out and you can see we have a badge. Pretty cool guys. In this next tutorial, I'm gonna be creating more of a clip art style design using a real photo of a rose. So I provided the rose in the description below so you guys can go download that and follow along. Once you've downloaded the rose, you just wanna locate it in the downloads folder most likely on your desktop and you just wanna click and drag it into your artboard. Once you import it, it's going to be really large so do not freak out. All you have to do is go to properties and basically change the width or height. So I'm just gonna change the width to let's say four inches and hit enter and as you can see, it's a, a lot smaller. Let's even make it smaller than that. Let's do two inches. Before I do any processing or anything like that, I just wanna center it to my artboard. So again, I'm using my alignment options up on the top. It's uh, in a good spot and I can start applying my effects to this rose. Now we're gonna apply a few different effects today. We're first gonna add some grain and then we're gonna add a stamp effect. Most people don't even know that you could do that in Adobe Illustrator, so let's check it out. First I wanna select the rose and head up to effect and we're gonna go all the way down to texture until we see grain and we're gonna left click on grain. You've probably seen me use this menu in Adobe Photoshop and didn't expect to see it in the Illustrator, right? Let's go over the settings real quick. So my intensity is set to 68, my contrast is 57 and my grain type is set to enlarged. Your Yours is probably gonna be set to regular. You just wanna switch that and select enlarged and you're good to go. Now, these settings will change from photo to photo depending on the lighting of the photo and a bunch of different factors like the sharpness of the lens. I mean, it keeps going. So definitely mess with these settings and see what looks best for you. But this is kind of what you wanna see. You wanna see a nice soft grain pattern. Once you see that, we're gonna press okay. I imported the wrong rose, so I'm just gonna re-import that real quick. Uh, what I did is I added a slight black stroke around the rose so my detail is not lost on the edges. It's gonna make more sense in a second, so I'm just gonna go back and resize that to two inches on the width. With that updated rose, what do you think I need to do next? 
If you said add grain, you are correct. We're gonna head up to effect and apply the same grain. Remember, it's found under texture, but guess what? Since I already applied the grain to the last photo, it's already right here on the very top. So all I have to do is select apply grain and it will actually apply the same exact grain that I just applied to that last photo. We're gonna head back up to effect. We're gonna go all the way down to sketch and you're gonna see something under sketch that says stamp you wanna select stamp. Check that out guys, exactly like Photoshop, we have that same stamp effect. And as you can see, that grain helped bring out a lot of detail in this rose. Another factor that plays into the detail is smoothness. Now, if you were to just bump this all the way up, you could see that it's taking away a lot of the detail in the grain, and we really don't want that. We only wanna go about four with this. Um, you wanna kinda of be very cautious of using too much smoothness. And then the only other thing you really need to focus on is light and dark balance. Now, if we raise this all the way up, you can see that it's going to significantly increase the darkness, which is the shadow values of our image, and we don't want that. So let's lower it back to around four, maybe five. Let's do four and press okay. At this point, we're still working with a raster image technically, which is uh, not a vector and we don't want that. So the next step we need to do in order to fix that is just click on image trace on the very top here. Once you click image trace, you will see the image change a little bit, but nothing else happens. What you need to do is where it says tracing results, instead of clicking expand, what you wanna do is actually head over to the image trace panel. And this panel is where you're going to make all your changes. We don't wanna ignore white right now because we're actually gonna use the white for the background color. So let's go ahead and keep that. What we instead wanna focus on is the noise and the uh, threshold and things like path corners. You can play with all these settings to get the exact design desired look that you're going for. Now what I wanna do is just lower the noise a little bit and watch what happens right here. It's gonna bring out a little bit more grain and we can even increase the threshold effect and this will actually make the image a little darker. So we don't want it to be too high. Let's go about 115 and check that out. See that looks a little better. Let's go a little higher, maybe 118. And let's increase the path to around 60% and let's see what that looks like. It doesn't change much, but that looks pretty good to me. So if you're happy with the results that you see and everything here looks good, then let's go ahead and click that big button that says expand and it's going to expand it. Now, here's the thing though, you will have a white background. Let's drag it onto our gray area and you can see exactly what's going on here. So what I need to do is just select the outside and delete it and keep all the white on the inside. So instead of using my selection tool, I'm actually going to use my direct selection tool and left click on the white background. And if I hit delete on my keyboard, check this out. It gets rid of it completely. That's why that black stroke was there originally to do this exact thing. So now you guys probably understand why we had that black stroke. Now all I have to do is drag it back onto my artboard and center it again. Now we just have to press T on our keyboard and type out some text. So let's type out create and see what that looks like. This font, eh, it's okay. I'm gonna resize it first and let's go find another font. I found a font called Hara or Hera and I don't even know where I found this font. I wanna say Envato Elements. Unfortunately, I don't have the link to this one, but uh, you guys can just type it in on Google and find it. I actually think it looks pretty nice. So we're just gonna use it for this example and I'm gonna resize it, make it quite big. I wanna change the letter tracking, but how do I do that? If you answer it, hold an option and use the left and right arrow key, you are correct. Another cool trick is if you're holding an option and using the left and right arrow key, if you press command at the same time, it will actually go faster, which is pretty nice. So you can um, basically make bigger incremental moves. Was that even a thing? Let's go about right there with the letter tracking now. I don't like the ease on this font, man. We might just keep them for the sake of this video, but uh, yeah, they're kind of bothering me. But what I can do now is actually just center everything. So I wanna make sure that font is centered and then we can kind of start placing it where we want it to be and figure out where things are gonna overlap. But before we even go further, what I need to do is change my font color. There's like a million different ways, right? We can go down to properties and change the fill right here to red. We could do it right here. We can make it orange right here, red, whatever. We can even go to the top right here and do it right here. Now what we could do is hold in shift command and then use the left bracket on our keyboard to send it to the back. That is changing the arrangement. So again, shift command and then the left and right bracket, which is shift control for PC users. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and make maybe a duplicate copy of the text so I can have certain parts overlapping. So in order to do that, all I have to do is press command C, shift command V to paste that in place and we are good to go. You can normally just use something called a mask and mask out certain areas, but I'm gonna keep it simple for this video since a lot of you watching are beginners. I'm just gonna press Shift Command O 
and outline the text. And I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna make sure I'm selecting that top layer. And what I'm gonna do is change the color to something else so you can visualize what we're doing. So now that that's green, man, that green's kind of a nice color, not gonna lie. But uh, all we need to do is locate the eraser tool, which is Shift and E on your keyboard. With the eraser, you just wanna erase certain parts. And as you can see, we are revealing what is under which is the red text that we have under the rows. On the layers palette, you will even see that. So everything works in order, just like Photoshop. Now, this is cool, because now we can kind of pick and choose what we want to overlap and what we don't want to overlap. And this is a really good uh, way of just creating depth in your designs. Everything else looks pretty good. Maybe this will go under too. There we go. So now we can change it back to that red color. So I'm just gonna color pick the red under. And there you go. Now we have text that is kind of intertwining with the rows, creating so much more depth, and it just looks amazing. I like to take it a step further. So you know the stars that we made a, a little bit ago? We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna create a circle, and we are gonna go to distort and pucker and bloat. And let's just create some stars. Make them like a lot longer, maybe. It's more of a stylistic choice at this point for me. There you go, and we can even expand them if we need to. We don't need to, but I like to do that. You know what, to customize the text a little bit more, I'm just gonna delete the center part. So I have two copies of my font, remember. One is overlapping to create that depth, and then the bottom one is just staying behind everything, but we need both to be outlined. So let's just press Shift Command O to outline everything. And now we could just left click on the shape twice that's in the center of the C and just delete it. And there we go, now it's deleted and we could drag this in instead, which looks so much cooler in my opinion. There you go, so now we just customize that and then we can create some little ones as well. There we go, maybe make this one a little larger. I, I like it, but I don't like how it kind of just looks like a rose. There's nothing special to it. So what I wanna do is head over to my brush and then you're gonna see blob brush tool, which is shift and B. And we're going to use black to match our color of our rose and basically make some nice drips. I didn't wanna say it, but I wanna make the rose look drippy, okay? <laughs> we just wanna paint them in. Not like that though, those looked weird. Yeah, just kind of, you know, play with the shape of it a little bit and you'll get something that looks like this. And you can add it anywhere. Maybe we have a little bit of a blobiness right here too. What am I even saying now, you know? Have fun with it, that's the main thing. Now we got some drips going on and it's not so basic anymore. So now we have a design that utilizes a actual photo and I called it clip art. I don't really know what to call this, but it's cool and that's how you do it in Adobe Illustrator. It's been an insane journey growing Merch Design Academy with all of you, and we cannot thank you enough, including our sponsors, for making these videos possible. And if you guys really enjoyed today's episode, just hit the thumbs up button so I know that you guys liked it, and we can continue doing what we're doing and building this amazing community. In case you guys need help preparing your designs for director garment printing, you definitely wanna watch this video at the end right here. It's super helpful. I visit a plaque headquarters in LA to give you guys the inside scoop on how you can prepare your graphics and just make better graphics for direct to garment printing. But that's all for today. I will see you guys in the next one.